So there I was trying to download 16 million colors using the request library in Python. All right. Here we go. All the way to 16 million. Six and a half hours later. Oh. oh okay. At this rate, I'd only have to wait 66 days and we'd be all done. Trash. Obviously, nobody wants to wait 66 days to have to run some simple script. This is where asynchronous programming lends a very helpful hand. And it's what we're going to be showing you how to do in Python. <laughs> Let's look at an example. There's a link in the description to all the code that we're going to be working with here. I have two scripts here that, for all intents and purposes, do the exact same thing. They both make 100 API calls to the AlphaVantage Financial Data API. We're looking to get a ton of financial data very quickly. It is also going to time how long it takes to make 100 API calls. Let's run each of them. A few inches later. 20 seconds. That's a snooze fest amount of time. Let's try the other one. Now let's try async. One second. Uh, how? We need to talk about asynchronous programming and the event loop. An event loop is a loop that can register tasks to be executed, execute them, deploy it, or even cancel them, blah, 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 blah. What the hell does that mean? It means we can let some stuff that takes a long time do its thing in the background, and when it's all set, the event loop will actually pick it up. What do you mean that wasn't better? So confused, don't worry. Let's look at a synchronous versus asynchronous example using cooking as the analogy instead of programming. This guy is your Python code. He needs to cook dinner, which consists of burger and green beans. These functions cook burger and cook green beans are analogous to making API calls or doing some type of input output operation because we need to wait for them to do something. We need to wait for the API calls to be returned. Similarly, we need to wait for the burgers and the green beans to cook. Now he's also gonna need a couple other functions, including getting the burger out, getting the beans and setting the plate. This is the entire set of functions that he needs to actually cook dinner, get burger, Burger, get beans, cook burger, cook green beans, and set the plate. In our first example, he'll be cooking dinner synchronously. This is just like Python. First, we call get burger, get the burger, then we call get beans and get the beans. Now we start our cook burger function. And since we're doing this synchronously, we just have to wait for this function to complete in order to move on. Since this function is blocking us from actually continuing to move on to the next function, you'll also hear this referred to as blocking. This doesn't take any computational power on our side to do. We just have to wait. So hypothetically, we could be doing other stuff like dancing or like cooking the green beans, which is what we should be doing. But nope, we are watching the burger. So only once the burger is done, can we move on to actually cooking the green beans, making us take a lot longer than we probably should. Yeah, throw them in the microwave. This isn't programming with Chef Ramsay. And then when it's finally done, we can call our set plate function, having dinner done in about 20 minutes. Ta -da! So how do we improve this? Well, ideally we see two areas where we can actually do work at the same time, during cooking the burger and cooking the green beans. And this is where asynchronous programming and the event loop is actually gonna come into play. We can start an event loop, which means we can periodically check on stuff that's already running. We can kick off a function and not have to wait for it to complete, but periodically check back to see if it's done. This is known as the event loop. This way we can start the burger and move on and start the green beans, but periodically check to see if the burger is done and also periodically see if the green beans are done. This way we can get our delicious food done quicker. Now, let's see it in Python. Synchronous first. Hopefully you'll recognize a lot of this. We're gonna import the request library so we can make some API calls. We're also gonna import OS just to get some environment variables. If this confuses you, don't worry about it. So I'm gonna get my API key, os.getenv. I've already set it as an environment variable. We're gonna be making API calls from the Alpha Vantage API. What do these do? Well, they can give us financial data about stocks and stuff. I'm gonna get my URL, which I copy paste from the Alpha Vantage site and I just format it so that I can add a symbol and API key. Then I create a list of symbols that I want to grab from. Maybe I want to get Apple and, and Google and, and Tesla and Microsoft and I don't know, let's just go with four for now. And I'm going to return all the results here. Now all I got to do is loop through the symbols. So for each symbol in symbols, response equals requests dot get URL dot format symbol API key Results.append response.json. Print. You did it. Print. Working on symbol this. 
dot format symbol. If it zoom out here real quick, Oop. we are synchronously looping through all the symbols in here and just printing out that we're calling that API. So let's see, let's run this. Amazing, that was so fast. We can even time this, do a little bit of fun timing here. Wow, it took one seconds to make four API calls. You did it, great job. But what if I wanna make a lot of API calls? How long does this take? 13 seconds to make 60 API calls, huh? I can get through two TikToks in that time. So this is clearly too long. So we wanna be able to do this even faster. Let's do this exact same thing, but asynchronously. So let's even start by copying this whole thing and pasting it in here. So this is gonna be exactly the request, but we wanna do this asynchronously. So the main things that we have to import are gonna be Asyncio, which is the library that allows us to actually run stuff with event loops and run stuff synchronously because Python natively does not do that. And AIO HTTP. Since the request module is actually naturally synchronous, so we want an asynchronous way to make these API calls. Everything in here can stay exactly the same. We'll keep the 60 symbols. Now let's come down here and we can even comment out all this timing part because that might just be confusing. This is the code that we care about, and this does it synchronously. So how do we do this not so synchronously? Well, at some point, we're gonna to need to get that event loop. First thing that we're gonna to need to do is we're actually gonna to need to tell Python that this block of code is asynchronous and that we can use asynchronous stuff in it. So we're gonna actually turn this whole thing into a function. Async def get symbols. And now this keyword async tells Python that this function can now do asynchronous stuff. Synchronous, asynchronous, synchronous, asynchronous. Get symbols. And let's just have our function do get symbols. And if you run this right now, you get this error saying get symbols was never awaited. So we need this event loop, right? The event loop is what's gonna be checking to see if there are async functions that are done or async processes that are done. So we need to start that event loop or that checker. So we can do event loop equals asyncio.get event loop. And this is gonna be our event loop. So we have some loop that's gonna be checking stuff. And we wanna run this get symbols thing inside of the event loop. So we'll do loop dot run until complete get symbols. And this is saying that get symbols is gonna run inside this event loop. And then after everything is done, get symbols. If we run it now, it's gonna work exactly the same, right? So it's still gonna take a really long time to do this because we're still using requests. So let's comment back out the timing stuff. So we're running this stuff in a loop and this, this is the function that we're currently running inside of a loop, but nothing in here is asynchronous. This is all synchronous stuff too. We get rid of goodbye requests. Now, the other thing that's kind of confusing is that this is like, hey, there's a lot of stuff here, but all we're really doing is running this get symbols. Luckily, async gives us a way to actually abstract all this out. We can just do this by calling run asyncio.run get symbols. And this is the same thing as doing all this loop stuff here, but we just say asyncio.run. So this is the same as doing this, but this is only one line. And in Python, we like doing stuff that's easy and in one line, so great. So now we got rid of requests. Let's figure out how to do this stuff asynchronously now. So we're running an event loop, but we're just not doing anything with it. We're just doing synchronous stuff inside of this event loop. Let's do asynchronous stuff inside this event loop. So instead of this request thing, we're gonna use AIO HTTP. So we can do session equals AIO HTTP dot client session. And this will get, give us a session that we can make these get requests with. But because at some point we're gonna to have to do session dot close, and sometimes, and by sometimes I mean all the time, I forget to do session.close, it's usually a better practice to actually do this syntax, which is gonna be with AIO 
HTTP dot client session as session, excuse me, client session with parentheses, as session, and pop this out. This means that whenever this finishes, it's actually going to automatically close the client session. However, if we run this right now, it's going to say unclose client session, use async with instead. So we want to use this async with instead of just with. We're saying, hey, this is an async thing. And then, of course, now if we run it, it just says, hey, there's no such thing as requests. Well, great. We don't care. This means that we'll run this bit asynchronously. So this says this function is async. This says this with is a async, which is great. That's what we want. Now, the code to make the API call is just this. Instead of request.get, we're just going to do session.get. So inside of this session that we've opened up with the internet, we're going to get this URL and we're going to format it the same way we did the, the request. One other thing is oftentimes you'll have to do SSL equals false here. Now, here's the other thing. When we make this call, this is actually not going to return the response. Why? This is not going to return a response like it does with requests. It's actually just going to return a coroutine. So this session.get is, is an example of a coroutine. What is a coroutine? And in order for a response to actually get saved someplace, we need to wait for this to make the call and return. So if we want to do that, we can do await session.get url.format. So we're waiting for this to return. Otherwise, this will return nothing. It won't start. It won't do anything. So we're saying, hey, we're going to go ahead and kick this off, throw it onto the event loop, and wait for it. And then we can do this results.append response.json, which we also have to await because this is an asynchronous awaitable object. So now when we run this function, it's going to go a lot quicker because these are being sent asynchronously. However, the waiting and and let's even add the time in. Took us nine seconds, so about four seconds quicker. Doesn't feel like it's that much quicker, right? Well, you're right. This isn't that much quicker. The reason being is we're actually waiting for the URL to get sent and responded to, and then we're waiting to get the answer here. So we're really not doing that much better than with requests. We are kicking them off a little faster in this event loop, but we're really not doing anything that much quicker. But for all intents and purposes, this is some async code. Great job. Ta -da. Now let's spice this up. Let's spice this up. So we have this code and we're waiting to get a response here. We're waiting for session.get to return. And we're doing this for every single of these. It's not really the same of just throwing the burger on the grill and then walking away because we're actually waiting to get a response here, similar to synchronous. We want to send the API call and not wait for the respond. And we want to just rapid fire send all the API calls. So how can we just send all of these at the same time? Well, this is where we can get into tasks. So we can create a list of tasks for the event loop to use and just send that entire list of tasks at once. So instead of doing all this hard work here, what we're going to do is we're going to create this function and it can be synchronous called get tasks and pass in the session. In this, we're going to create a list of tasks which include everything that we want to run on this event loop. So for each symbol in symbols, tasks.append session.get and it's going to be this this bit here boom and then we're going to return return the tasks now instead of doing this stuff we're going to say tasks equals get tasks with the session that was passed in what we're going to do now is we're going to tasks is get tasks from the session this is a list of all the functions that we want to call. So, right? So it's task.append, session.get. So it's all these functions that we're going to call. We're going to take the entire list and we're going to say, hey, 
Let's kick all of these off. Go. Have fun. Do it. And we're going to do that by saying responses equals await asyncio.gather star tasks. What does this star do? Well, it dereferences the list. So it's going to do session.get, you know, the, the Tesla API call, comma, session.get the Microsoft API call, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's all packed up very nicely like this. So the star dvrat references the list and turns it into uh, unique parameters for this asyncio.gather. So we're going to send everything to the event loop. And then we're going to do for each response in responses, responses, we can do result, results.append response. And we actually have to do results.append await response.json because response is an awaitable object. So again, what we just did here is we got all the tasks packed together in a nice little list. We threw all of them onto the event loop with this await asyncio.gather tasks. And then once they're done, we're just going to grab them. Because we're going to wait for all of the tasks to be done here. So let's see how this performs now. Oh my goodness gracious. It took less than a second to make all 60 of those calls. You did it. Great job. Now I'm going to show you one other advantage here. So if you want to just throw these tasks on the event loop right away, you can do this thing called async.create task session.get URL. This session.get is a coroutine. It's an awaitable coroutine, but it's not put on the event loop. If we do async.create task, it's automatically thrown on the event loop right here. Then when we call await async.gather tasks, this won't actually throw them onto the event loop. This will just wait for them all to come back. This list of tasks can be stuff that's already on the event loop or stuff that needs to go on the event loop. And asyncio.gather, it'll put stuff on the event loop if it's not already, and then we await it for it to come back. All the code that we went over here is going to be in the description. Have fun. Talk soon. Tattoo reveal at 10,000 subs.